Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Huda Beauty Naughty Nudes eyeshadow palette. So if you want to hear my thoughts on this, see my tutorial, and then also get some swatch comparisons and just keep watching. <laughs> Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And of course, one of the newest, hottest releases was the Huda Beauty Naughty Nudes eyeshadow palette. She usually only comes out with one big eyeshadow palette a year. She often comes out with little small 9 p.m. palettes. It's only once a year that we've been getting our big made in Italy palettes from her. Quick facts about this guy, it is $67 and it is currently available on the Sephora website and the Huda Beauty website as well. I would recommend if you are interested in picking up this palette to pick it up now if you are a beauty insider at Sephora because discount does apply to this palette. So I got this baby for 20% off, which is amazing. On nine, this is described as a versatile palette with 18 shades and five ultra wearable textures to create dramatic smoky eyes as well as a variety of natural looks. They also say that this is a reimagination of the best selling new nude palette which I totally agree with that. This guy is made in Italy and if you aren't aware her nine pans are made in China so I do notice a difference in the formula between her made in China palettes and her made in Italy palettes and it does have a 24 month shelf life. So let's get into it. We'll start off with the packaging. I don't really like this packaging. I feel like it looks a little bit cheap. Now it's not cardboard like it was a couple of years ago. It now is a plastic packaging just like the Mercury Retrograde that came out last year. The front of this is what I think makes it look a little bit cheap. I don't like this handwritten naughty and just kind of plain because I feel like all of her other ones are just so much cuter. Look at Mercury Retrograde. How much cooler does Mercury Retrograde look compared to this? You know, I feel like she stepped it down with the packaging and I know that is a minor detail, but for me, I really love packaging. So kind of sad about that. <laughs> when you open it up, of course you do have a mirror and then you have your 18 shades. Like I said, there are five different textures in here. So we have some new textures in here as well. So she now has this marbled tie-dye kind of formula, which is brand new. I don't think I've really ever seen it before, maybe in some indie palettes here and there, but she is the first person I would say in the mainstream makeup market to bring tie-dye shadows to us, which is what she tends to do. I think Huda was one of the first to do textured shadows. She's one of the first to include really like pressed glitters and really play with textures. So that is what I love about her palettes and the palettes that she curates. She really tries to mix it up. So you do have these tie-dye shades which just kind of mixed together to be a normal shade. Honestly, there's nothing really that special about them. You have some matte. You have her foiled finish, which honestly, it's a little bit too flaky for me and you'll see that in the tutorial. So her foiled formula, which is gonna be like these three, are more flaky. I don't really like that. You have a regular kind of metallic formula and then the last one, besides the mattes, of course, trigger warning if you have trypophobia, don't watch this, but then you have this gel texture that why that's all i've been posting on my social media is why there's a lot of things that this looks like to me but let me just say this i used to be a middle school health teacher last year it looks like something taught in one of my units <laughs> Anyways, oh, it makes my skin crawl a little bit. So here are the swatches of the shadows. I thought for the most part, the shadows swatched really nice. I could definitely tell that flaky formula was going to be a little bit flaky, but I was impressed with the tie-dye formula. Like I said, it's not anything unique, but I did like how the colors blended together. And I loved her metallic formula, which is gonna be Please Me and Desire. Those are absolutely stunning. I did not swatch Slippery, which is this weird holy shade. If you've seen, they've tried to advertise it where you pop the pearls inside. I'm not about to do that. I really just feel like she came out with the shadow, one, to make the people talk which we did, so that got her name out there. Two, because she is so focused on also being a little bit more innovative because that's what her palettes have been in the past. Nobody asked for this. Nobody wants this. I have not seen a single person go, wow, that's really cool. So it's a gel shade with popping pearls that are supposed to give you pigmentation. I'm not about to pop these pearls. I will touch it. I didn't swatch it yet. I haven't touched it yet. We're gonna do it live. Ew, oh, oh, oh. I don't even know if it's showing. 
that's what it looks like. So it's literally just a glossy shade with little to no pigmentation. I mean, I am extremely underwhelmed with this shade. Like that's all that it does. It's not very pigmented and it just adds a gloss to the eye. I'm not remotely interested in using it ever or doing anything with it. She would have been better off putting in a pressed glitter or something. I don't know, I'm not about it. So nobody asked for it, you know? So we are going to get into application. So I'm gonna start off with the tutorial on how I got this look. BK Beauty 201, I'm taking Filthy. I am going to run Filthy along the inner half of my crease to open up the purple tones in this look. Also running that along the inner half of my lower lash line. I mean, actually I'm just gonna take it all around, but really build up the color right here. Next, I'm going in with Har. I'm using a BK Beauty 202. Now I didn't really need to use this color for this look, but I was really curious about the quality of this because it's that tie-dye shade, but in a matte finish. So she has a couple other tie-dye shades in here, but they're all in a shimmer finish. So this is a true matte shade and I'm very impressed. There's no fallout from it. You don't get any kickback in the pan and it blends out really easily. So the quality is very nice. I actually think it's good in this matte formula. I was worried, but it's Blending very easy. Time to start bringing in the purpley tones. So I'm going in with Untamed. I'm using my beloved Refer number 14 brush because it's perfect for small eyes. And I'm gonna kind of cover the brown basically. Like I said, I was more so using the brown just to check for quality. And you know how sometimes plums can be difficult to work with. As you can see, this is pretty much blending out for me. I'm doing very little work. I forgot how good Huda's Italian palettes were because I've been using their little nine pan palettes and those are okay quality. Like they're pretty good and workable, but I forgot how good their Italian formula was. Next, we're going into the deepest shade, which is spicy, just using the same brush. And this is really gonna add the depth. As you can see, I'm gonna take the tip of my brush, run it along my lower lash line, really build that up and work it out with the other brushes. And I do want to lay a little bit of spicy on the outer half of my lid because I want it to layer underneath the next shade I'm gonna use. Now, this is the most unique shade in the palette. You aren't gonna find this color in her regular line. I mean, besides this one over here, but you're not gonna find a color like this in her line because there are a lot of dupes. This one is a really cool lid topper. I love the blue duochrome that it has and it looks beautiful on top of the plum shade. So that's why I did that layering technique. But I really, really love it. It's not too metallic of a finish either. It's just kind of this subtle, not super shiny color. I'm taking a bit more of the matte shade and I'm putting a little bit over top in the outer corner just for some dimension. Next, we are gonna take Shameless. Now, this is a formula that I wanna show you first that it is a bit flaky, a little bit on the chunky side, as you can see. It's not applying really smooth. It's not sticking to the lid as good as it could. Now, you have a few of this kind of formula in the palette. One, two, three shades that are gonna run a little bit more flaky. My suggestion would be, of course, glitter glue. And you can use a finger like I'm doing. You're just going to have to really work on pressing and working the shade into the skin so that it doesn't get really flaky. So don't apply it with a brush. I just wanted to show you that, but use your finger to really work it in. Finally, I'm taking some of Tantric. And this is another flaky shade. So again, I'm really working on pressing it into the skin so that it doesn't get really flaky. And that's the look. So obviously with liner and lashes here is how everything is looking. I absolutely love this look. I think it is so stunning. As far as the quality of this palette, I mean, I, I think it's a really good quality palette. Like I've been saying, her Italian formula is just so much better than her Made in China. And her Made in China isn't even bad. Like, I like it, I think it's workable. But this did remind me how good and how much more blendable these mattes are. I just think there really is a noticeable difference. So if you really want a good hooded experience, I would recommend going more towards 
the Italian formula, though I do love these little guys. I love the curation. Obviously, slippery is a no-go for me. That's going to be a dot of the palette for me. And the, really, the only formula that you have to be conscious of are her flaky formula. That's the only way I can use to describe it. Just make sure you work it into the skin or use a glitter glue. If you use a brush, it's going to be a hot mess. For a, such a pricey palette, you might not want to purchase this palette if you expect every single shade to be amazing. I think that her flaky shades are really pretty. They're multi-dimensional. So I think it is worth putting in that little extra five seconds of effort because that is what's giving my eyes the dimension here. Whereas the marbled shades, they're just more of like a pretty shimmery shade as opposed to these flaky shades, which are going to give you that glitter. But seriously, it is a very good quality palette. All of the mattes blended beautifully. They layered over each other beautifully. It gave me a great opacity. I mean, I think the tutorial should speak for itself as to how easy it was to use them. Everything else just seriously did work great. Now let's get into the color story of this palette. And I have to admit, I wasn't very excited about this palette, especially when I first saw the initial release of it because it is very clearly not something new in the Huda line. This looks like every one of her palettes that I feel like she's been releasing in the last couple of years. And which is very disappointing because last year with Mercury Retrograde, I was so excited about this palette. I was so inspired by this palette. I feel like she took a step outside of the box with this one. This was something that was not like any of the other palettes that she had in her collection before. So I was really excited to see what she would come out with for her big palette this year because she was so different with this Mercury Retrograde palette. And then when I saw the release pictures, I was like extremely underwhelmed. I probably would not have purchased this palette if it weren't for my YouTube channel. The only things that was unique about this palette, one was the really gross slippery shade, two the marbled shades, which she really did for shock factor because at the end of the day besides slippery which is useless shade, the marbled shades they just blend out really to be a regular shimmer. Just a quick comparison, I do like the color story, I like these tones, I think they're pretty. It's just really repetitive to what she already has in her line. So this was kind of a second take on the original new nude palette and I would say these are different. I do think if you have this new nude it is still worth getting the naughty palette. There are going to be a few shades that are very very similar but they are going to play really well together. So I don't think if you already have this that you should stay away from this. In fact I really feel like this is almost a new nude version for deeper complexion. So if the new nude you thought was a a bit too light for you. Medium to deep complexions, I think this is going to be stunning, especially on the deeper complexions. So that might be your reason to purchase this palette. Now the palettes that I thought were the closest to the Naughty palette was Nude Rich. So the Nude Rich palette is a nine pan palette and very good quality, but again, not the Italian formula, but these I think are extremely close. Similar vibe here. And then also the Nude Medium as well definitely has some very similar tones. Tones. And then I did also pull the Sand Haze Obsessions that just came out again super duper similar. There are other palettes definitely in her line that I could probably get very similar colors to in here as well, but these were the four palettes that I thought were the most similar to the Naughty palette. So what I ended up doing was laying these four palettes out and trying to find the most similar colors to the Naughty palette as I could. So you'll see on my arm right now that the Naughty palette is swatched on top and then the bottom palette is a mixture of these four palettes of the colors that I thought were really close. While I will say the majority of the shadows shadows weren't exact dupes. They were very, very close. So my conclusion to this is kind of, if you have especially these little palettes, you already have the whole entire vibe of this collection. Maybe not every single shade, but pretty close. So this is most definitely not a necessity in your collection if you have a Huda collection. It's just not necessary. But number one, if you don't mind having similar shades, I'm usually in the boat of I really don't care for me. It's about the palette. Then you know what? It's a good palette. I really like the colors. I really like the looks that I think I can get out of this. And I don't think you're going to be disappointed with this palette. But if you're trying to be smart, I don't think that you need this. Thing that I did want to add in is if you don't have a lot of Huda palettes, this is a really good one. I really like it. It's just, you don't need all of the Huda palettes, you know? Alrighty guys, so that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions below. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.